Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Health Reversion, where we look at topics related to physical and mental health. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at water-soluble vitamins. Vitamins are classified into two categories based on whether the body stores them and how the body absorbs them. Water-soluble vitamins are those that easily dissolve in water and are absorbed by the body for immediate use. The water-soluble vitamins, as you may have heard already, are vitamin C and all of the eight B-complex vitamins. In future episodes, I'll be going into more depth on each vitamin, but for a quick summary of what vitamin C and the eight B vitamins are responsible for in the body are as follows. Vitamin C has the distinct role of helping to form collagen in the skin and also acts as a powerful antioxidant. While the B vitamins serve as very important cofactors in biochemical reactions, so in other words, they are needed for other vitamins, other minerals within the body, other enzymes, other genes to actually do their job properly in the body. They require those B vitamins. While conducting research and also doing the research on myself, I noticed that there were a lot of recommendations and claims that because these vitamins are water soluble, that the body can't store them. So I dived as deep as I could. I looked at a range of research. I trialed it on myself as well by taking B vitamin supplements, looking at foods high in B vitamins. And what I found is that there is some research that suggests that your body can store these B vitamins and the vitamin C in a slightly different form to how the vitamin is ingested. So once it goes down into your system, the body takes on a couple of different processes and is actually able to store amounts of these vitamins in your liver. And then when the body needs them, it can draw upon those stores. Just because they're termed water soluble vitamins doesn't mean that every day we need to replenish those particular stores. However, I have a little caveat on that. So allow me to explain both sides of the story. So the story that says you need these every day, you need to have some sort of intake of these vitamins each day. And the other argument that the body can utilize the amounts of the vitamins that you take in and can store them for future use. If you are living a life where stress levels are low, it's a fairly garden variety life, you have some challenges, you might have a nine to five, but things, things are okay. Emotionally, stress levels are good, all of these sorts of things. Then the B vitamins are likely not being drawn upon as much. So the B vitamins really help with stress and, and calming the nervous system. On the other hand, if, if you're in a stressful situation, if you are really burnt out, exhausted, etc., which I know a lot of people are and it's easy to do, then you may be drawing down on your reserves of these B vitamins and also vitamin C at a rapid rate, so quite quickly. So here's something to take into account and please, as always, do your own research. But looking at that garden variety life where things are okay, things are relatively stress-free, you may have enough of these B vitamin stores and the vitamin C to carry you through for several weeks, possibly even months. On the other hand, if you're very stressed, taking into account all of the toxins in the air, in the water, in the foods that we eat, then you may need to look at ensuring that on a daily or at least every second day that you are ensuring that you're getting not only your recommended dietary intake, but also enough for what you believe and for you to function properly. And through experiments, just like I did and lots of other people have done, you'll be able to determine what is enough for you and what's making a difference. One other point that supports the fact that we don't necessarily need these vitamins every day is the fact that yes, our ancestors and people that lived three, four, five hundred years ago didn't obviously have access to supplements. What they had access to was a range of foods that were mostly chemical free, pasture raised, 
not interfered by man in general. So they were likely getting a lot of these B vitamins and vitamin C from their natural diet and from the foods that they ate. And sometimes they went without food, sometimes there were periods of weather events, etc., that didn't allow them to consume and they still survived, they were still thriving, we're here today, etc. But just with that argument, it is, it is valid, but also just keeping in mind that life is nothing like our ancestors and the times that they lived in. Again. We're going to look at some further reasons why somebody may develop a deficiency with these water soluble vitamins. The first cab off the rank is alcohol consumption. Alcohol leaches vitamins and minerals from the body in order to be processed. Strict militant eating regimes where you're cutting out in some cases a whole macronutrient. General malnourishment, so not eating enough, which may be attributed to eating disorders or not wanting to eat for to keep a particular figure. And malabsorption syndromes such as Crohn's disease or if somebody's had to have surgery on their small intestine at any stage because the small intestine is the actual site where vitamins and minerals are absorbed. So if there's been any damage there or inflammation or surgery, then obviously supplementation would be warranted. Some final points on foods containing water soluble vitamins. So how can we ensure that we're looking after those foods or getting those particular foods and keeping those stores of vitamins, keeping the amount of nutrients in the food there for as long as possible. So let's have a look into a few tips there. With the water soluble vitamins, particularly the B vitamins, they can be damaged quite easily by heat and light. So to reduce vitamin loss, we're gonna to continue to refrigerate our fresh produce. If we're cutting up the fresh produce, we're gonna to look to do the rinsing beforehand rather than after. Because once the knife's gone through, you're exposing the internal parts of the produce and some of the cells are exposed, etc., which may mean that if you cut and then rinse afterwards, you're gonna be rinsing some of the vitamins and minerals. And finally, avoiding boiling the foods that you're looking to get the B vitamins from. The exception here though is a soup or a broth where the vitamins are going to leach out into the water because after all they are water soluble but you're going to consume that soup you're going to be drinking those liquids and therefore retaining a lot of those nutrients a final point on toxicity can toxicity occur with the b vitamins and the vitamin c well the answer is yes these particular vitamins can cause all kinds of adverse reactions if you choose to have high doses of supplements. Now, while supplements are warranted in certain situations, again, stress, if you have any kind of malabsorption syndrome, such as Crohn's disease or inflammation in the small intestine, this is where supplementation may be warranted. And you'll quickly find out if you've had too much through some of the following symptoms such symptoms as lightheadedness, fatigue, diarrhea, and just feeling unwell in the stomach, feeling really hot. But what the body will do, as it's always here to return to homeostasis, it's always here to protect you, it will quickly flush out the excess amounts that it can't use and can't convert to storage. But that might mean that your urine turns really yellow, it might mean that you're going to the toilet more frequently, so keep an eye on those kinds of feedback because that's the body telling you, hey, this is too much for us at this particular point in time and all we're doing is flushing it out. So if you're paying these expensive dollars for these supplements and it's just turning into expensive urine, just keep that in mind. So lower those doses and monitor and see when I take a lower dose or half the capsule or a quarter of a capsule or if I take it every second day, does that make a difference to the amount that I'm excreting. That'll do us for today. If you didn't get anything out of this video, give it a thumbs down. If you got something out of it, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with other people that may benefit from this information. And stay tuned for all of the episodes coming up on the water soluble vitamins, tips, strategies, what to take, how much I need, toxicity. It'll all be there. Look forward to seeing you. Keep well.